Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Hewell Hauser, and here we are in beautiful Downey, California. We're standing out, obviously, on a school playground, and this is the head lady right here. Introduce yourself to everybody. My name is Yolanda Corner, and the principal here at Galden School. Galden, and this is a middle school? This is an elementary school. It's A.L. Galden School in Downey, California. It's a K-5 school. And tell us a little bit about these fine group of young people that we see out here. These look like great kids. They are wonderful kids. We have the best kids here at Galden School. They're very well behaved and very sincere, wonderful kids, and they do really well. And I noticed on your placard out in front of the school mm -hmm. when we drove up, mm -hmm. this is an official California Distinguished mm -hmm. School. Mm -hmm. That's right. We work really hard. We set high standards for ourselves to meet those standards. Our teachers are great. Our staff is wonderful. The parents are very supportive. We work together as a team to have the best learning environment for our students. The teachers, the staff, the, the kids, the parents, all the together. administrators. Yes, all together as a team. But here's another group of distinguished people right over here. And these are kind of the unsung heroes over here. Fellas, introduce yourself to everybody. James Garcia. Mike Newman. Hello, my, my name is Rudolph Ortiz. David Cubas. Rafael Portillo. And tell us who these gentlemen are. This is my landscape crew. They're a great crew. We, we uh, work on 22 sites. We uh, do landscaping. We do landscape maintenance. We try to maintain the school, and we all enjoy our job. Now, how many schools you all work? Let's get a good shot of everybody here, because you all are kind of behind the scenes. You're kind of the unsung heroes. Yeah, you could say that sort of, but we get enjoyment because we see, we see it when we leave. We see it when we get there. We see it when we leave. And the principals, they always pass on our back and say that we do a good job for so them. So you all are in charge of all 22 schools in the Downey Unified School District? Yes, sir. And you do what kind of things when you visit a campus? Well, we pick up trash, clean up, weeding, trimming of the shrubs, uh, trimming trees, just basic stuff, just to make it look clean. And for you all just happened kids. to be here today. Just happened to be here today. You spotted us and came over and and uh, well, said actually, hello. we were here yesterday. We started cleaning up the school <laughs> because we heard we heard a wind that you're coming oh, I got coming you. by. You know. Well, so. the place looks great. Congratulations. Well, Let's get a group shot of all these fellas because. These are the fellas that do the good work that keep all 22 of the schools in Downey spotless and clean and a great learning environment for the kids because oh, yeah. that's important. It's all for the kids. That's right. That's right. They've got a great attitude. Absolutely. That's why we love them. Well, now, as nice as these fellas are, thank you all very much. Back to work, fellas. They're going on to another school now, probably. As great as... These fellas were, and as great as, as this situation is right here, you've probably heard why we're here today. We're here because we heard here at your school in Downey, there's something going on here that's a little out of the ordinary. Something very special for our fourth graders. And it's something that's very popular with the kids as mm -hmm. well. That's right. And it doesn't take place inside one of the traditional classroom settings that you would expect in a school. That's right. It's the Mervyn's Moving Mission. The Moving Mission. Could you show me the Moving Mission? It's right over here. Ah, there it is. It's not moving right now. <laughs> no, it isn't. But, but it, it travels to different schools. Uh-huh. So what we're talking about here is a situation where you set up a classroom outside that isn't normally here. It's just a big old truck. That's right, but you, what's inside is really neat. Now, are we invited to go inside? Come on in. <laughs> We're inside the moving mission, and boy, there is a lot of activity going on inside here. You're the teacher. I am. How Your name you? is? My name's Justin McIntyre. I'm one of the teachers on Mervyn's Moving Mission. All right, tell us what's going on in here because there's a lot of activity going there on. There is a lot here. of activity. 
These children are all taking part in the mission tr or mystery trunk activity, which is an activity that's based around mission artifacts. Mm -hmm. They come and they grab an object out of here, and then they go back to the table and they act like history detectives or archaeologists. So they what analyze. What's in the, the what's in the what's in the trunk here? All different types of things. Like right here, he has a small branding iron, mm -hmm. and this is the symbol for La Parisima mission. And what's all in here? Uh, we have some of these brushes that they use to straighten out the wool. We have. Uh, this is kind of a carrying basket that they would uh -huh. Native Americans would use while gathering different things from the desert. He's got a gourd over here. He's got a gourd which they would turn into rattles or use cut off the top and use it to carry water. So what we're trying to do here is actually speak more about the people uh, from the missions and what the mission people were actually doing, their daily lives, the artifacts that they would be using on the mission. So in a way, this is what we're doing. We're bringing the mission to the children in a really tactile and hands-on way. Now, these are all fourth grade and fourth grade is when the students That's study the right. mission. So, so we this try to fits in perfectly it does. with the curriculum. It's perfect for the children. And we work specifically with fourth graders and fourth grade alone just because of that mere fact that they are the ones studying California missions. So this, this is, is part of this. This is great right over here. Yeah, so here are all our little detectives over here. That's absolutely right. They each get a little magnifying they glass magnifying like a glass true detective too. would have. That's right. And That's right. they take something, now he's got the gourd. He has the now gourd. what's he doing on the okay, sheet so, here? So on the sheet, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to draw this object. So he's trying to figure it out, analyze the object, and think about it. Then he's looking at it with the magnifying glass and trying to explore it. And then he starts to figure out what material is this made out of? Who would have been using this on the mission? Where was it used on the mission? And what in the world are they doing with this thing? Oh, wow. Now, okay, now let's see what he's got here. Well, he's got... I don't know about this. I don't know about that one either. Well, that's a gourd. He's got his gourd. He thinks it's made from adobe, which is a good guess, because no one's really sure exactly what this is made out of. Uh -huh. The gourd's really a difficult one to, to figure out. But he's got his magnifying glass. Yes, he's, he's looking. He's it exactly. <laughs> he's doing it exactly right. <laughs> this is great. It is great. Now, what's going on over here? What are you all doing over here? We just took something out of the mystery trunk out there. So uh -huh. she's trying to figure out what this is. So she's looking at it. Boy, she's, she's looking at it pretty closely here. Now, are you one of the teachers? Right. My name is Yvonne. Tell us what happens uh, from day to day on board. From day to day, we travel to different schools throughout the LAUSD um, district. And we visit fourth grade classes. And we learn about mission here on the museum exhibit we learn about mission life daily life for the people that lived actually on the missions and in the classroom which I think we're going to visit later we learn more about the Kuiya traditions and how their traditions were affected by some of the missions and how exciting is it for the kids to come inside this you like being in here yes <laughs> it's fun because we get to do like fun stuff uh -huh. uh, so it's kind of fun for the kids to come in a, a mobile classroom like this a big old truck like yeah, a lot of sometimes some of the children have never visited some museums, and it's kind of neat to do something out of the ordinary in class. They actually have this huge uh, moving exhibit come to your school, and you get to touch everything and see things that. So you encourage people to touch. Yes, it's a hands-on. Everything is hands-on. Everything is hands-on. Everything is hands-on, and that's very important to us at the Autry Museum of Western Heritage. And Mervyn's has definitely collaborated in that effort, uh, just to make everything hands-on makes it so much more enjoyable for the children. So you encourage people, the kids, to touch everything. when they come in here. Everything in the truck is hands-on, including the small exhibits in the in the entryway. There, they are definitely encouraged to touch every bit of the exhibit. Now you mentioned the Autry Museum mm -hmm. and Mervyn's. What's the the relationship. Well, Mervyn's has uh, developed this truck, the Mervyn's Moving Mission truck, and each year they team up with a different museum somewhere in California to actually uh, facilitate the teaching of this vehicle. So this year they've teamed up with uh, the Autry Museum of Western Heritage for the 2002-2003 school year. And so after that school year, we're not sure where they're going next, but somewhere else in California. Because I think uh, this mission was in Fresno last it year was. and hooked up with the museum in Fresno. Exactly. So last year they were with the Fresno Metropolitan 
Metropolitan Museum up there and toured all of Central Valley. Well, it's got to be exciting. Let's see what's going on over here. Now, what, what is this whole basket exhibit thing? Well, here? part of the activity that we do in the classroom is actually basket making. And so we have a lot of uh, different examples of Native American baskets and what they would be using these baskets for. Uh, the one that he was just touching there is actually what they would use to carry babies. Uh -huh. The baby would be strapped on in the hood there to shade the baby from the sunlight. Uh, the other ones are for different uh, gathering techniques. And you've got shots. This is from the inside of a mission here. Exactly. Uh, this is part of an old mission. Exactly. We have archaeologists working just as the kids are trying to be archaeologists. We've got examples of the archaeologists. What would this? Uh, we've got uh, lots of pictures. Uh, ma most of these pictures are from La Parisima mission, uh -huh. which has worked very, very well with the Autry Museum and letting us shoot pictures to put into the mission truck. And they can kind of look up here for clues as they're analyzing their objects. They can figure out that maybe leather was used for saddles. Maybe this hammer was used over here. Look what she's got here. What'd you get out of the trunk? I got a cloth for to study it as an archaeologist. And, oh, you, she's an archaeologist. Exactly. And how do you think this would have been used in the mission? Maybe on top of the horses when they rode horses. Very good. Is that, a, is that the right I, answer? I, I think that's a wonderful answer, and I think that would be. They would put that right underneath the saddle, so that would be one of the many uses of this. So you've been studying missions all year in the fourth grade, right? Yeah, right. Is this the first time you've been in a classroom like this? How would you describe what this is all about. Well, I would describe that it's about Native Americans and missions, uh -huh. and that it's really um, awesome because it shows articles about um, things that they used. Wow. And it's, it's kind of really fun cool. to go to class in a place like this, too, isn't it? Yes. This is a little different from your usual classroom situation. Right. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the teacher the classroom teacher. Now, how does this fit in to what goes on in the traditional classroom? Because I hate to say it, but the kids are pretty excited about right. being out of your classroom and in this classroom. But that's good. That's good for them. It's always good when you can give them hands-on things to really experience what we're trying to teach in the classroom with books. And when we have a high population of English language learners, which we do at this school, it even gives them more connections to understand the content in the classroom. So it's really awesome that they have this opportunity. So this is this is an example of something innovative that's really working oh, in yeah. the classroom. Yes, definitely. Anytime you can bring realia into a lesson, it, it makes it that much more effective for So learning. it's great for them to have something to touch and exactly. feel. They get to look at them, they're all going through the trunks right. over here. And all of this will translate into their reading and their writing and their excitement for doing those uh -huh. things in the classroom, yeah. Now, does the word about this thing get around to all the teachers, fourth grade teachers? Oh, yeah, the whole school is buzzing. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, like from school to school, everybody yeah. wants the mission to come everybody to their school. It. And the schools in our district are very excited that they're coming. Three more detectives. Now, what have you got here? Um, it looks like wax. Wax? I thought maybe it was soap. You think it's you it, think it's soap or wax? Soap. It looks like soap. And you think it's wax. So you've got to take it over there and look at it under your magnifying glass and decide what it is. And what have you got? A spur. A spur. Now, how would that have been used in the mission? The cowboys would um, use it to hit their horses. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've got? Horseshoe. A lucky horseshoe. Mm -hmm. And you've got a comb. A comb, and how would they abuse this? With the to, other one to comb an animal. Oh, okay. And you've got a like to catch fish. Mm -hmm. And you've got oh, here we are back. We can't mm -hmm. decide whether this is wax or soap. It's soap. This is soap, exactly. And do you know what this soap is made out of? Tallow. It is. It's tallow Tal soap. Very good. How did you figure this out? Um. Somebody help me. Uh, <laughs> I can tell because it's so greasy. <laughs> wow, this is, now wait a minute, what is this thing? I think it's a, a game where I think you have to put the acorn right here. So oh, it's one of those can, things that you do like that. Yeah, so would this have been a Native American game? This would have been a Native American game, and this would teach them agility in hunting because they're, they're really doing the spearing motion. So there's something practical to be learned 
Absolutely. from all of these things, even though inside the moving mission here, it's kind of like a game. It is. It is a very practical game. It is. It's a very practical game, and it really, just having the hands-on component makes it so much more successful and really brings the missions to life for them. Now, this looks a little more formal over here. You've got these displays set up here. It is. Here's another one over here. Yep. What's the deal on these? Now, these are just like museum displays, except, of course, you can tell that we've removed the glass here. So children can actually reach in here, grab any of these items, and explore these items and figure out what exactly they could be. Like something like this. What which is, is this? This is actually called a molalino. And what they would do with this is they would take this, take the Mexican chocolate right here, put it into the cup with some water, and froth it up by put spinning it, it back and forth and that kind of turns this into like a cocoa or a chocolate drink. Wow. And then you've got some of the... We've got the, the, the Padre suit here. Uh -huh. We've got uh, letters. These are actual letters, or letters that uh, Father Sarah had written that we've rewritten so that kids can touch them, so they can go through and read these. This one's translated into English, but we do have the Spanish translation there as well. Now, is this a one-day experience for them? They, the, the mission pulls up in the schoolyard. It's true. They, they All the fourth graders come on board. That's exactly and right. Just run them through here. We do. We do two classrooms in one day. So if a school like this that has five classrooms, we're actually here for three days, because we want to work with every single fourth grade class in the school. And do you think this, this actually remains with them or is this just something fun? You know, I originally when I started, I, I didn't think this would be something that they kept with them, but over and over and talking with other people doing these truck programs, like the people on the Myomobile, this, this is a lasting impression and this is something that they will keep with them for most of their lives. Uh, just because it is such a special event for them, something that is so different from their typical day at school. Well, obviously we have come to a bigger classroom. We have left the moving mission and now where are we? We're actually in the classroom, and while the other half of the classroom is on the truck learning about missions, this half stays in here and learns about the Kawea Indians, and they learn about their musical instruments, and they actually weave baskets. So there's a two-part program going on, exactly. and then they'll switch off this afternoon mm -hmm. with the group in the Moving Missions, and the Moving Missions group will make baskets. Exactly, and this group will go onto the truck and learn about the missions and do exactly what you just saw. Now, do you always have to stay in the classroom, or do you get to go? on board too. I get to go on to the, to the Mervyn's Moving Mission truck as well. So you travel around with the Moving Mission. Yes. Are and, you, and who do you work for? I work the Autry? The Autry Museum of Western Heritage. Okay. Exactly. And they partnered up with Mervyn's to do this program. Right. Mm -hmm. Well let's show now who gives instructions as to how to do this. Well the, the teacher who's actually in the classroom so that would be me for, for today. So actually we taught them. We started off with a basket start for them mm -hmm. and then they, they, they work on the basket and build it. So you mean they're actually doing this for the first time yeah. today? And aren't these good baskets for them? Wow, now how hard is it for you to make one of these things? It's kind of hard. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I thought. So what do you do? You just have to weave it around? Yeah. Had you ever done anything like this before? No. Had you ever done anything like this before? No. Had you ever done anything like this? No. And do we know how the Native Americans would have used these baskets? What would they have been used for? For putting water in or putting food in there. Mm -hmm. Now, how many people have actually been to a mission? One, two out of the whole group. So you see that kind of points up what this is all about. How important the program is, yeah. So the kids that don't get a chance to go to the mission, we kind of bring it to them, to their school. And when they do get to visit a mission, mm -hmm. they'll have all this experience in their exactly. background so they'll know what to look for and what they're experiencing. Exactly. It, it adds to their, their mission experience when they do actually get to visit one. Is this a, a new way of, of teaching or has this been around for a while and I've just missed out on it? <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for us, it's new. We just started it this, this school year, but I'm sure programs have been going on like this for a while. Yeah. The idea of bringing something to the classroom instead of the classroom having to go to that mm -hmm. place. Yeah, it gives, it, it's a wonderful opportunity for the students and for us as teachers because we get to interact with the kids. Yeah. And you get to see 
the enthusiasm yeah. and the excitement. Okay. This is this is the kind of thing that keeps teachers teaching. Exactly, because it's such a joy when you see the kids get into making their baskets or they, they're able to tie in something their teachers already taught them from their social studies book with what we're teaching them. And it's, it's a wonderful interaction. And it's a wonderful and important chapter in the mission story to teach the Native American uh, presence in the mission story. Exactly, because they were such a huge part of the mission. I mean, they were the main reason for the mission, the Native Americans. So it's very important to, to tell their story as well. Ready, set, go. <laughs> now this is another interesting part of the program. Exactly. This is when the children learn about the Native American culture. Uh -huh. These are some of the instruments the Native Americans would have played in California. So here we have a clapper stick that they would use instead of a drum uh -huh. to keep the rhythm. These are deer toe rattles made out of deer hooves. Uh -huh. And this is a gourd rattle here. And what's this right here? This is a beaver fur. Often what the Native Americans would trade with the Russians. So uh -huh. the Russians, the Native Americans would give the Russians the, the fur, and in return, the Russians would give them the trade beads that they have there that they would use to decorate their oh, clothes. Oh, she's got the beads over Those here. Those the Russian trade beads. Boy, we've got a whole little rhythm band going <laughs> do, right here. If, now, this gives a whole other definition to hands-on. This is definitely hands-on, for sure. <laughs> Okay, now we have come outside the moving mission to take a look at this magnificent vehicle. Introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Johnny Webb. You are the driver That's of right. this big old trailer. Is this a, what do you call this? This is just like a big old truck that'd be out on the freeway. It's a big old truck. It's about the biggest truck you can find on the freeway, but we call it a specialty vehicle. A specialty vehicle. In Do the, you have to world. have a special license to drive it? Well, yeah, I'm a commercial truck driver. Mm -hmm. Any commercial truck driver can drive that, license to drive it, but it's a very unique type of truck to have out on the road. And how were you driving regular trucks before you got oh, this sure. gig? Oh, sure. Yeah, and then I got involved in this driving specialty vehicles like this about five years ago, actually. So what's it like to drive one of these things on campus and, and park it and, and watch the reaction? Action to yeah, it. you get a lot of attention. You get here early in the morning, and usually uh, the the ele elementary schools aren't designed to handle a big truck like this. So you usually have to get into a pretty tight spot. Uh huh. And yeah. does it cause a lot of excitement yeah. when you're parking it? And Definitely. People are wondering what the heck it is. <laughs> yeah, the whole neighborhood comes out. They want to see what it is. What makes so much noise? And it's so big and flashy. Yeah. And all the kids. So you've got to feel kind of special about this as well. Oh yeah. Definitely. And the kids make you feel special because they, hey, there's the driver. Hey, let's see that big shiny truck. <laughs> hey, what's in there, mister? <laughs> okay, now we've come back on board the moving mission, and there's a little different configuration than when we left it. What's going on down here, Justin? We're actually at the stage now where they've looked at their objects, they've written about it just like a history detective or an archaeologist, and now we're sharing what they've learned from this object. So we're, we look at objects, we figure out what they thought, and then we tell them what it was really used for. And how's everybody doing? They do very well. They're almost always absolutely right. <laughs> You know, they, they're very good at these objects. And so. has everybody had fun on board the moving mission today? Yeah. Pretty good, nice way to oh, spend a, a morning. Oh, it's a wonderful day, yeah. All right, go on back to your detective work. Now it's time for our closing testimonial. Your name is? My name is Gina Hall, and I'm the outreach coordinator at the Autry Museum of Western Heritage. And this whole thing in Los Angeles is, is coordinated by the Autry Museum and in cooperation with Mervyn's. And both the Autry and Mervyn's deserve full credit for what's going on here. That's exactly right. It's very unique collaboration between the Autry Museum and Mervyn's where we're able to reach a large number of children by doing this program in a way that we wouldn't normally be able to. Now, is something like this uh, known throughout the country? Is this kind of something that others teachers throughout the country probably read about or hear about and envy? You know, it, it, very, it really is a very unique program. I think mobile truck programs 
programs themselves are very unique. And this program, especially being between a company and a museum, is very special and we're very lucky to be able to deliver this program. Well, I don't want this to sound like a commercial. If it does, that's okay, because I don't care. Mervyn's deserves credit for putting its money where its mouth is, and the Autry deserves credit for teaming up and staffing this thing. This is the kind of partnership that works out in the community. That's exactly true. That's right. And we really have reached, we serve over 40,000 children a year at the Autry Museum through school tours. And through this truck program, we're able to reach even more children who, because of a lack of funding for buses and field trips, aren't able to come to museums and to missions anymore. So we're really bringing the experience of both of those to the children in a way that they'll really remember forever. Well, congratulations. This is a day that we'll remember forever. Let's just step out of the way and watch as they finish up their lesson here. They're giving their reports now and talking about what they've seen and learned here in the moving mission, this wonderful, creative, innovative program taking place right here in Los Angeles. Okay, we shared the gourd, right? And then what do you have over here? A statue. A statue. Who's that in the statue? Um, Is that any idea? It is. It's the Virgin Mary. Very good. And so, did you draw a picture of that too? No, I think that is so. It is difficult. Okay. Very good. And then, so, what would they have that on the mission for? Who would be having? Where would that be found on the mission? In the church. In the church, exactly. Very good. Okay. And you, you've got an object there in your hand. Yeah. Now, what in the world is that thing? <laughs> Why don't you hold that up so everyone can check that out? Okay. What is that made out of? Visiting. With Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.